Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Teamworks. I hope you enjoyed your first session in creating your team rules and consequences. Hopefully you came up with some funny consequences, just so that the kids understand they're being held accountable for some kind of rule, but that it was a fun rule. And it's just a little reminder that we want to follow our rules. Well, now we're really going to dive in into those team building kind of activities, those activities that really build their team building skills. And what are we going to start with? We're going to start with one of my favorite, many of you probably remember this from training, it's really fun, but it's called the tallest tower standing, the tallest tower standing. And what is the objective? Is to develop their communication and their cooperation skills by working together on a structured activity. So of course we're building their communication and those cooperative kind of skills because they're working together on a very focused structured activity. Um, and cooperative learning activities are really big in education these days. So we are pioneers. We've been doing it for 20 years. Uh, but anyway, so again, these cooperative learning activities help students to, you know, share their strengths and develop those less secure kind of talents they have, those uncertain skills that they don't really know about or know that they're there, so we get to tap into that untapped potential, as well as they get to learn how to problem solve. They problem solve as a group, um, so they learn how to problem solve, work through conflict, respect each other, um, and then uh, by and large, they're all held accountable as a group. Um, so those are all the perks and the benefits to those team building activities. So to set the tone, make sure again that we're striving to make the environment or the experience feel safe so that they start to come out of their shells. And don't forget to always make it challenging. So we're going to go through some fun activities today, but don't forget, uh, you got to make it challenging so that they don't get bored. Um, and also, last but not least, make sure you're giving everybody an opportunity to contribute. So we want everybody to feel like a valuable member of the team. So encourage everyone to have a voice, an opinion, or just be hands-on so that everybody feels like they're contributing to this fun, structured activity. All right, so let's get going. Um, tallest Tower Standing, we're first going to start off with our question of the day. And our question of the day, again, is just to get them thinking about it. Have you ever worked on a group school project? And if you did, what did you learn from the experience? So have they ever worked on a school project as a group? And what did they learn from the experience? So maybe they were part of a club, maybe in the classroom they worked on a science project together, et cetera, et cetera. And if they haven't had that experience, then talk about maybe teams, where they played on a team, whether it was sports, or maybe even a game, maybe even a video game. Video games now you can even play as a team. But get them to think about what was that experience like when they were working together as a group or as a team on a very specific project. And what was their takeaway? What did they learn? All right? So that's your question of the day. And then we're going to move on to one of my favorite energizers. So again, remember, you have the choice to a la carte the activities. You can do the energizer for the whole session, or you can... I'm looking over here. Uh, you can do the main activity, which is right here for the host session. It's up to you, or you can talk for the host session. It's all up to you. But these activities are really fun, so I think you'll like them. Over, under, through. Pretty simply, you're going to set up chairs. You're going to pull six classroom chairs. Um, you're going to create three rows of two chairs facing back to back. You're probably like, oh my gosh, what does that mean? Uh, but again, six chairs, three rows of two chairs facing back to back. You will have a copy of the curriculum, so the curriculum has a little outline for you. But if you go over here, my little stage, um, this is what it'll look like. You'll have two chairs facing back to back and three rows. So there would be a second row and a third row of these chairs facing back to back. Next, uh, simply you're going to tape a pattern. And again, on your uh, curriculum handout, it shows the pattern. But the pattern is pretty simple. You're going to have an over pattern, which is in your first one, so the kids are going to step over something, it's called over, under, through. The next pattern is, in the next row of chairs, you're going to create this tape pattern. Oh, there we go, here we go, here we go. And then this is something that the kids will go under, and then I'm going to take this apart and show you the last pattern. And then the last pattern is, they're going to go through two pieces of tape, like so, all right? And that's it. So remember, they're going to go over, you're going to crisscross the tape, they'll go under it, and then you're going to put two pieces of parallel tape and they're going to go through it. But the rules of the game are, they've got to do this as a whole team, so they all have to hold hands, 
and then of course the first person will go through the obstacle course and everyone will follow. If their body touches or any piece of clothing, accessory, hair, they all have to start over. So those are your rules. You'll set up the chairs, three rows, back to back. You'll set up the tape, one uh, tape to, that they go over, tape that they go under, and tape that they go through. They do it holding hands, so you'll have all your students holding hands, and they're going to go through the obstacle course trying not to let any part of their body or clothing touch. If they touch, they got to start over. So again, it's really fun. Hopefully you guys remember it for training. Um, if they touch, they start over. And if you need to simplify it, maybe you have them go through it one at a time so they get a feel for it. And then maybe Bill have two, then three, then four, and then they your entire team. And if it's too easy, then maybe have them do it backwards or do it with no talking. So just some recommendations, some spins on the activity. But I personally love this one. It's really fun. And mentors, don't forget, Get involved, get engaged, have fun with the activity as well. All right, now our main activity, it's called Tallest Tower Standing. Competition, kids love competition. Um, I think some of our mentors love competition as well. But it's really fun. Simply, you're gonna break your team up into two even groups. You're gonna get two bags of materials. You'll pass out the, each group with their bag of materials. And in your bag of materials, you're gonna have some really odd items. You're gonna get some piece of aluminum. You're gonna get some construction paper, um, index cards, pipe cleaner, straws, uh, and Dixie cups. Uh, last but not least, you're also going to get popsicle sticks. Then you're going to tell your two teams with their supplies. Say, all right, you guys, this is a time, time competition. What you have to do as a team, create a tall, freestanding structure. Tall, freestanding structure. That looks kind of like a tower. And when I say go, you're going to going to go, you're going to work together, and you're going to bring your tallest tower. Um, they cannot tape it to the table, and they can't tape it to the ceiling. Hey, I've seen some teams get all the way to the ceiling. All right? It has to, they can tape it together, but they can't tape it down or tape it to something. They're going to build, they're going to build, you're going to give them 30 minutes, you're going to time it, you're going to encourage them, cheer them on, get everybody to participate. And then when you say, time's up, hands off, they got to be hands off. So they got to be hands off, they can't be holding it or touching it, hands off and then you'll judge. The tallest tower that's self-supporting um, is the winner. And that's it at the end of the day. So that's tallest tower standing. Those are your team building activities. They're my favorite, they're fun. They create that sense of unity and cooperation, which we love, that'll make a smooth sailing for the rest of the program year. So I wanna end on this note. You know, I love ending with a little inspiration. So this might be something you throw out to your team even before you engage in your activities or maybe as a wrap up. Let them know that individually, we are a drop. But together, we can be an ocean. It's Will, signing out.